Heckler & Koch VP9, Janik TP9, VP9 versus TP9, going head to head. <laughs> Janik TP9 SA, 15 shots to the body, 10 yards. HKVP9, 15 shots to the to the head. Interesting. So I haven't shot either one of these guns in a long time, which was good enough excuse for me to bring them out and do a head-to-head -head comparison. I think they have a lot in common. Obviously there's some things different about them, but they are both nice guns in the same class. Well, from those opening volleys of uh, one magazine of 15 rounds each through each gun, the Zanuck shot a lot more accurately and shot a little bit more to point of aim. That's the other thing too. I haven't shot either one of the guns in a while, so I always have to refresh my memory on where it likes the hold point to be. Clearly the VP9, uh, I was holding a little low, so I need to bring it up a little bit more to a point of aim hold. The Zanuck was pretty, pretty much right on also. Just shot a tighter group, didn't it? Specifications for these two guns are pretty, pretty close. The barrel length of the TP9 is 4.46 inches, so almost four and a half. The barrel length of the VP9 is 4.09, just barely over four inches, so not quite four and a half, and just over four inches makes slightly less than a half inch difference. So not a great amount of difference. It's not gonna make any difference in accuracy. It's not gonna make any difference in velocity. The only thing it's gonna make a difference in is you know holster and, and things like that. The height of the guns is close, actually closer yet than that. 5.7 inches for the TP9 and 5.41 inches for the VP9. Uh, the weights of the two pistols, 29.28 ounces with an empty magazine for the Zanuck. The HK, 25.56 ounces. Magazine capacity is 18. So, nice little bonus here for the Zanuck, 18 round magazine capacity 15 for the VP9. On paper the sights are pretty close. They are both three dot but they're very different um, approaches. They both have that sort of sloped Novak style rear sight. Um, the TP9 has a much finer set of three dot sights. The dots are smaller. The sights themselves are smaller. They've got that little line right here on the back and I talked about that VP9 has the sort of yellow glow in the dark stuff. You remember when you're if you're if you're as old as me or almost, you remember when you were a kid they had those you know vampire f plastic fangs you could buy, that were especially around Halloween time that glowed in the dark, and that's what that always reminds me of. The thickness of the two guns, uh, I don't have a comparison yet because VP9 publishes 1.32 inches. However, Janik does not publish a thickness, so let's find out. First of all, let's find out where HK is measuring theirs to get their their measurement. Alright, so we got 1.28 right there across the slide stops. 
1.264 here. Hmm. Interesting. And then what they're saying, 1.32. So I'm not seeing that unless it's back here where these little ear tabs are. Might be. That is the widest yet at 1288, but I'm still not seeing. Still not seeing 1.32 any place. It looks like they've. Uh, I don't know. I don't know where they're measuring that, but let's check out the Janik, and I can see because my caliper won't fit down there that it's wider. Just over 13, so 1.3 inches at the slide stop control that looks to be as you would expect on this gun the widest part so 1.3 inches call it at the slide stop and let's measure these across the slide stops 1287 so so you know you're within you're within 12 to 15 thousandths on the width I'd say that's pretty even of course, with the VP9, you do have ambidextrous controls. You have an ambidextrous slide stop because it uses the paddle type of magazine release. So you have a ambidextrous magazine release. And of course, we have an ambidextrous trigger. The Janik has no ambidextrous controls. It has a reversible mag catch. So we can turn that around to make it left-handed. That is not ambidextrous. The only thing it actually does have <laughs> that you could give it credit for is the uh, the decocker. And I'll talk a bit about that in a minute. But that is theoretically ambidextrous because you could reach up with your thumb like that from either hand. Although it's incredibly awkward. Um, it also has an ambidextrous trigger, and it has an ambidextrous sights. I know, because I used my left eye and my right eye. The grip textures, um, are, these are both wearing a rubberized talon grip, if you weren't able to notice that. That's kind of a, that's an immediate thing for me. But uh, the, the, the grips underneath are both, you know, different stipple designs. I prefer the HK VP9. Uh, VP40, that, that type of stippling um, over what came on the Janik. Um, Janik wasn't bad, but uh, HK does a better job with the grip. And Talon <laughs> makes them a lot better yet, and of course makes them pretty much equal in that respect. Okay, another dimension that I like to look at, and I think some people like to have me look at, just make sure I've got a zero on my caliper is the trigger reach and that is the distance the shortest distance between the inside curve of our trigger sort of the apex of the trigger and the apex of the grip tang or beaver tail and on this gun it is call it 2.8 inches that was the VP9 now on the Janik oh man that is almost exact I mean, I just slid that on there, and it literally was exact. 2.794, so, you know, depending on whether or not I was compressing that, well, I don't think I was. I think I was catching it right there at the joint of that, so they're within just a few thousandths. That is, I think, as close as I have ever seen from two totally different guns. They are both striker fired, of course. With the VP9, of course, when you want to field strip it, you do have to pull the trigger to release the hold that the striker has, the striker lug has on the uh, the frame. However, the Janik has a decocking mechanism up here on the top, so we don't have to pull the trigger. We can just push down on this, and then the slide would come right off. So there's that. It's kind of a kind of an odd thing. 
I neither like it nor dislike it. I don't really care. I'm kind of ambivalent about it. But for people who don't want to have to pull the trigger to field strip their guns, that can be a big plus. VP9 uses a nitrite type of finish. It's a very good finish. It seems very durable and very, very well lasting. The Janik uses a Cerakote finish, so different approaches there. Also, obviously, Cerakote, extremely durable and long lasting. Good protection on both guns as far as the finish goes. By the way, those first magazines were Sig Sauer Elite Performance Full Metal Jacket, 115 grain ball ammo. I've switched over now to Freedom Munitions, 124 grain full metal jacket balled ammo. And again, I'm going to start out with the uh, Janik. 15 more to the body. Same aim point. Let's see if I can't slow down a little and uh, make a nicer hole. So I'm going to be doing some more of these head-to-heads. I've got a lot of pistols that I've... Uh, I've only shot once or twice, and I keep thinking, wow, I need to get these back out. And this one and the VP9 were two that were on top of my list. And I thought, well, if I want to shoot them both again, have a little fun, I might as well bring along the good folks on YouTube, have a little fun with it. So here we are. Wow. I believe I had only done the first hundred with the Janik, and I don't think I had had an opportunity yet to get it back out again. Today's the day. And uh, since then, I've put a Talon grip on it, a Talon rubberized grip, and that really helps. That makes it really nice. But this is a sweet, very sweet handgun. I mean, if you're already a, uh, if you're already some kind of a savage fanboy of the Janik, then uh, you don't have to be reminded. But if you haven't tried this gun, I dare you, because you're going to be ponying up some money. Because the Janik TP9SA, SA for single action, talk about that later, uh, because this gun was designed off of the Walther P99 platform, a nice extra bonus is that it fits almost perfectly in my PPQ holster. Always good when you can reuse gear. Now, back to the VP9. HK VP9. Go back up to the head. See if I find my aim point on this thing a little better. Once again, 10 yards with Freedom Munitions now. See that flinch? Wow. Been too long since I've been to the range. So that behaved a little nicer. Once I slowed down a little bit and uh, I think found the right aim point. VP9 is another one of those guns where, you know, early on, um, I didn't I didn't get a hold of one of these, you know, in that first wave of uh, of euphoria that everybody had with the VP9. I think it was, uh, you know, maybe half a year or so later before I finally got a hold of one. And I really did like the gun. I still do, but it was funny watching it go through the. Oh my God, this is the greatest thing ever to, oh, look how horrible it does in a torture test and we don't like it anymore to, oh, well, now we think we kind of do still like it. Um, I, you know, I kind of enjoyed watching that all unfold. It's ergonomically one of the very best guns on the market. Absolutely fantastic. <clears throat> very, very comfortable in the hand. The grip is very short for people with smallish hands like myself so it gives you a really nice trigger reach and 
you know, I'll, I'll do some measurements later. We'll show you exactly what the numbers are so we can compare against other things. All in all, just a very ergonomically sound handgun. Great balance, great feel, nice sight picture, all of that stuff. I'm just not sure it's the best shooter in the whole world. All right, so if I see something of interest during a comparison video, I like to point that out, however odd it may seem or insignificant it may be. Uh, in this case, I just want to show the comparison of these two guns post-shooting. They both shot the same number of rounds, the same exact types of ammo, but, and I'm not going to really be able to see this too well here, but get a look inside. You can see the barrel ramps there and the little bit of difference. You can see that the Janik is a lot dirtier than the HK. Alright, so there's that. Now, you can see that the barrels are pretty well lined up right there, but we've got a little difference. You can see the difference in the slide length as well but what I'm trying to show you is the difference in the the amount of carbon again the uh, the Janik is on the bottom and you can see that right here under where my thumb is there's a lot more carbon build up at the top of that slide behind the chamber than there is on the VP which is actually quite clean and again they shot the exact same rounds of the exact same kinds of ammo so it's a perfect comparison in that respect and then to just look at the frames also of course they're each dirty in their own way but the Janik is a little bit dirtier but they're designed very much differently here too so the comparison is not really as much apples to apples in the frame as it is in the slide. I just thought that was interesting that uh, the one gun got a lot dirtier than the other and I think and this is complete speculation on my part I think that may be just a sign that one has a little bit tighter tolerances in terms of the chamber. It's not letting as much gas blow back when the shot breaks as the other. Okay, I promised I would show you sight pictures. So we're gonna start with the VP9. Again, it is your basic three dot. It's a nice three dot sight picture. I like the sizing of the blade and the notch. And you have that glow in the dark which I guess is better than no glow in the dark, but still not really true night sights. But it's a good sight picture. All right, now the sight picture for the Janik TP9SA. Same kind of three dot sight picture. I think I'd like this one a little more. I think the VP9 is better for quick acquisition, but the Janik is better for accuracy and precision. And at first I wasn't sure how I was gonna like that little vertical line, but I actually like it. It's kind of like putting the golf ball on the tee. It works pretty nice. Okay, so I sent the target out to the doctor and he got all patched up and got some new dots, this time slightly larger orange dots. And I'm going to switch things up a little bit. Um, first, I'm going to start with the VP9, but I'm also going to start with some Tula steel cased ammo. Let's see how each of these guns like that kind of ammo. I like the sight picture a lot on the VP9. It has what they call night sights, 
but they're really just glow in the dark. So they have to absorb light from a, a light source and then they'll store that for a period of time. But if you've got this thing in the night, nightstand drawer or a lockbox or something, you reach for it in the middle of the night, the sights aren't going to be bright. <laughs> They're not going to glow at all. They'll be dark. So They're kind of uh, faux night sights. Okay, doing good. Hard for me to see exactly at 10 yards, but uh, I think I think they all hit. Now the Janik TP9. I can honestly say that I, I think everybody I let shoot this gun bought one. <laughs> Some people, I even let them shoot it, I just let them dry fire it and they, they went out and bought one. It is a sweet gun. I know it has its detractors and I know it has its fanboys, you know, it has its uh, it's Savage 1R type people, but uh, I am on board with the TP9 SA. I like it. I like the single action only trigger. This trigger is just about as good as anything on the market, period. And better than 99%. It also has a very nice sight picture. Traditional three dot. They are not night sights, faux or otherwise. Also has that nice vertical line. I'll show you the sight picture in a bit. This is a this is a sweetie. Looks like I threw one outside the orange dot, but this is a sweet gun. There's no doubt about it. I'm going to tell you right now, the the Janik has a much better trigger than the VP9, and that's not to say that the VP9 has a bad trigger by any means. This one is just that good. It is so good that it puts the puts the VP9 trigger kind of to shame. All right, now let's try some aluminum. Aluminium, for those of you on the other side of the Atlantic Ocean. Go back to the VP9 and go back up to the head. I like alternating back and forth between the guns because it helps me compare. And share my thoughts with you, whatever they may be at the time. The ergonomics of this gun are definitely nice. They're also nice for the Janik, but a little better for the VP9. Okay. For the most part, they're both ejecting very well, um, putting everything in a pretty consistent pile. I'm not used to cross draw. I'm wearing two holsters, one with the VP9 and one with the uh, Janik, and, uh, and you can you see that <laughs> sort of a uh, give me a sort of a cross draw with the VP9. Something on. Something of which I am not too accustomed. Back to the Janik, speaking of. Aluminum blazer ammunition. Just trying to see if we can make either one of these guns have any kind of problem. With any kind of ammo. The Janik feels like it handles the recoil a little better. 
It's very slight, but just a little better. Both of these pistols have an accessory rail, 1913 Picatinny rail, out front. However, neither one of them are very good, and I'll explain why I say that. Yeah, they're great if you want to probably mount a light or a laser, it'll probably fit on there okay. What I'm trying to mount, or was trying to mount while I was testing both of these guns, was this scope mount. Sort of a universal scope mount, that's something I'm going to review separately. Probably be a two minute review on that coming in the near future. However, what I found was the Janik, the rail is too narrow and I think the cross notches are too wide or something. But anyway, um, it would not, you couldn't get it tight enough on here to keep it from flopping around. So you could not get a good strong connection to hold a scope because at the end of the day that's what I was trying to do. I got a scope on there. I was trying to use that for some distance accuracy testing. Unable to do it and the VP9 also unable to do it because the rail a couple of things couple of problems with the rail here. One, it's a little bit too wide, so it's actually super super tight and you actually start to shave off some polymer when you try and force that that aluminum um on there. The other thing is, you know, they put this identification plate right down in there and they've taken away a significant part of your cross piece. Well, if you've got something that mounts, uh, see if I can show this. See that right there that moves up and down? Well, that's the catch for this device. And guess where it needs to catch? <laughs> right there where they've removed all the material. So as far as being able to use this universal scope mount, both of these guns did not work with it. So they both get thumbs down as far as I'm concerned because, and I, I'll talk about this more, this is a UM Tactical universal mount and uh, I'll talk more about it. Like I say, it's going to get its own little review, but I'm compiling a list of the guns it works with and the guns it doesn't work with for that review. And here are two that it doesn't work with. Okay, just to really put both of these guns through a little bit more of a test, shot some steel cased ammo, shot some aluminum cased ammo, jacketed hollow points, especially what I've loaded in both of these guns, the six hour Elite Performance 124 grain jacketed hollow point and V-crown ammo. I have had some guns uh, have problems with it because it's a very, very wide mouth jacketed hollow point. So let's just see how these handle that. And just full disclosure, this ammo was actually provided by Sig Sauer. Starting with the VP9, still at 10 yards with a fresh orange dot. Just gonna do five rounds each. Okay, no problems. VP9 uh, doesn't seem to have liked it very well in terms of accuracy, but let's see how the Janik likes it.
Okay, well that was uh, looks like a bit of a different story. Again, at 10 yards, I have to squint to see. It looks like I dropped one low, but uh, I can almost guarantee you that was me, not the not the ammo, not the gun. In fact, I kind of swear by this ammo. This is very accurate stuff, so I'm surprised, almost astonished at how poorly the VP9 shot it. Hmm. Well, it is a polygonal rifled barrel. Shouldn't really have anything to do with it because it is a jacketed bullet, but still, one never knows. Does one. These are both very nice guns, obviously. I like them both. I like the VP9 a great deal, but I was really pleasantly surprised by the Janik TP9 when I picked it up. And I kind of picked it up sort of a, you know, it's like, eh, okay, let's see what the buzz is about. You know, some people have been talking about it. So I picked one up and I haven't looked back. I mean, it's been, you know, you know, what an incredible uh, pleasant surprise this gun was and I know a few few people have bought them just because I was kind of so nuts over it but the trigger on this gun is absolutely fantastic it's a much better trigger than the trigger on the VP9 and the VP9 trigger is a good trigger so that's saying something um, I would I would really have a hard time saying whether right now whether the TP9 trigger is better maybe than even the PPQ that might be a comparison for the future um, the only, the only, to me, the only thing that takes away from the Janik is, is the sort of really cheap stamped metal, um, slide stop, but, um, you know, it's functional. It works. Okay. I got no complaints. So other than that, this is a, this is a super high quality gun. I shoot it very well. I shoot it, um, certainly on the day I did this comparison, I shot the TP9 much better than I shot the VP9. So here are two really nice guns. And my conclusion, I think, at the end of this comparison is that the the Janik TP9 is every bit as nice a gun as the HK for a lot less money. Neither gun has an external safety, neither gun has a magazine disconnect safety, so they are both good in that respect. Let me just check the trigger pull for each gun, just to do a, a comparison. Start out with the VP9. Five pounds, 10 ounces. And now the TP9. Five pounds, five ounces. So, five ounces difference. Not terribly significant, but the, the Janik to me is a much better trigger in general. So let me demonstrate real quick. Take up at the wall. Super crisp break. Reset. Short and very, very tactile and audible and no additional take up and you are right there back at the wall. VP9 take up is less. You're at the wall but it's a squishier break. It's not nearly as crisp. Reset is short but watch little bit of take up just a tiny bit of creep there and then you're back at the wall but it's a little bit squishy on the brake just a little bit two guns that are a whole lot of fun to shoot i needed to get back out here and shoot them both because i just wanted to and i thought you might want to come along so i hope you enjoyed it
I wonder how many times I'm going to be able to say TP and VP before I have to go PP. <laughs>